and if it's good, we can put it on YouTube too. So guys, we're going to talk about video editing. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah, video editing is, is, is a fun because once you are done shooting your film, your documentary, your TV show, editing is what makes the complete program. So you can add music, you can add special effects, titles, the whole program comes out in video editing. So let, because these guys know, I asked this question. So what's a good editing versus bad editing? Can you tell me? What do you think is a bad editing? Uh, Tanisha, you? Having like no emotion. Like, that's no, it's okay. not, that's not what I mean. Like, so in video editing, so have you watched anything you, you say it looks like pretty bad editing. So what's a bad editing versus good editing? Maybe like, there's like no, nothing really added. Yeah, nothing really added, yeah. Boring scene. Yeah, that boring scene, it's I think responsibility of an editor to make it interesting. That's another aspect of a bad editing. But the real choppy, so so if editing is choppy, so so the bad editing is when it's visible. So when as an audience you tell, oh, editing is good, it means it's bad because you are looking at editing. So invisible editing is a good editing. Invisible means you care about your actors, you care about the story, and the video editing is invisible in front of you. So you don't even feel that it's edited. Because human mind, what's a movie? We go to theater to watch a movie. It's a dark room. There's a reason why it's a dark room. When you watch something uh, on a TV in our living room, it's a different experience than watching a movie in a theater. Because when you watch a movie in a dark room, we suspend our beliefs. We become part of that journey. So whatever those actors are doing, we are part of that journey. And so if actor is looking at another actor, your human mind will say, I'm interested in knowing what that person is seeing. Now it's a director's choice to show it to you what that person is seeing or other person can hide it. That's what the horror movies. So we will talk about different genres of video editing. In horror movies, you could see your actor is looking at something, but they don't show you. This is how you increase fear, how director is increasing fear in your mind, because you don't know, it's unknown. So you use all those tricks for video editing. But if editing is invisible, it's a good editing. So it's not bothering you or it's not taking away from the story or your actors emotions okay okay let's talk about linear versus non-linear video editing so before software was invented the video editing software they used to shoot on on a film this is called a raw stock so this film goes in a camera and the camera rolls and uh, the camera keeps printing pictures on it so what's a motion? Motion is a, is a series of pictures stitched together. So you must have done that like in a book you draw people and if you flip the book you could see the person moving. Because when those uh, pictures are played in a sequence, human eye think it's a motion. That's what a motion is. So they use this raw stock so it was a linear. So now think of a linear editing. Linear means one after the other. So this is a spool. So we have a one scene at, at the last layer. So if you have to edit this scene, what do you need to do? You need to open it all up. You need to open it all up because it's a linear. It's one after the other. So you go to that scene. Now imagine now you need to go to a scene here. So you will go you and find that scene. Up. So this is how films used to be edited before. So there used to be like a spool. How did they edit it on that? Yeah, so they so they, so they put it put this in a in a spool. There used to be a lens where you can watch what scene is being played or what frame is being played and then they stop it. Then they will go to another spool with the other scene. So for example the scene one and scene two starts. They will cut it. It's called splicing. So with the blade they cut it. Then they used to get like a cement, it's called a film cement, and they paste it and they paste it together. So that's why they call it splice on final cut. That's why it's called splice on final cut or on the other side. Be, 
And these films used to be hanged in a something called a bin. So a lot of software use this word called bin, like in the avid media composer they call it the bin. So bin concept came from video editors because they used to hang these videos in the bins. I know when they used to play also, right, in the theatres also, we the see projector. the round, round thing, right? Yeah, so we could see the light coming and from there, so they used to project it. Now everything is digital, everything uh, uh, is projected through through 4K projectors on a hard drive. So how do they make multiple copies of this one, if they made one? So yeah, they that's a good question. So how they do they get, so they used they to put it onto that? Hmm? How do they put it onto that? So it's just like a old process, this is a chemical process, they used to get a film raw stock and the camera prints it, then you set it for a chemical development process and in the chemical development process then you get a positive of actual pictures on this which is projected, which is called a positive and that was projected using a projector. It was a good quality. It was pretty good so quality. So we used yeah. to, you guys remember you used to use a reel for the camera to get pictures and reel was so used there. to get. Yeah, was this supposed for cameras, you know? You Before know. digital camera, when you, yeah. now you put SD card, but there used to be a film roll, yeah. which you put it yeah. there, yeah. click a picture, then you need to go to the next one. Yeah. Click yes. a picture, you go to the next one. So that was a, it's a chemical. Yeah. So the light, goes through your camera lens and then it uh, registers a, a picture of that. Yeah. The camera moves to the next one, the picture is... is oh, so that's why those film rolls and cameras that says don't expose yeah. to light. Exactly, otherwise it's going to expose. Yeah. Film, it's a chemical that's going to think, okay, somebody's taking a picture. So it's washed, it's, it has happened to me so many times. So, linear process, so I want you to understand there was a linear process because you will see this word a lot as you grow, you will go to school, you will learn that. N L E. It's a non-linear editor. So when we talk about Final Cut Pro, we talk about DaVinci Resolve, we talk about Avid, we talk about Adobe Premiere. These are all non-linear non video editors. Okay? So the so the software has made our life so easy because now you can go from any place to any place. You can scrub it or you can scroll it like on the YouTube videos. You can jump to any scene. So you could do that. And I was giving an example. Anybody know VCR? Have you seen VCR? Heck yeah. Yeah, so the VCR, you forward it to watch some song or a scene, mm -hmm. and then you rewind it if you have to go back. But on the DVDs, you can go to chapter, you can skip scene, because it's all digital, it's all non linear. Cool. And why size is different? So, See? and these are called perforations. These perforations go in the camera. So have you heard about 16 millimeter, 35 millimeter? Yeah. Yes. So that's the frame size. So uh, this is the frame size. So the real uh, Hollywood movies are done on 35 millimeter, uh -huh. and the same concept is carried to uh, digital cameras too. Um, when you film with like a whatever whatever millimeter camera lens, is that the same thing? Yeah. So so 35 millimeter camera, for example, the Sony camera we use, Sony A7S2. It's a full frame camera, so the full frame is 35 millimeter, and they're different different sizes, and the resolution and how much scene will be captured. So if it's a 35 millimeter, you have a more surface to capture a scene than a 16 millimeter. So if you um, oh no, this is jarring. I know, but this one's better. It's okay. Don't distract me. So from next time, you should see like use same lens on a 35 millimeter. On a Sony camera, mm -hmm. the scene will be more wide. If you go to like a micro four thirds camera, yeah. the scene will be smaller. Yeah. That's the reason because the area is less to capture it. All right, any questions so far? No. Okay, so filmmaking or a TV production has three stages. Do you want to tell me what are those three stages? It's written right there. Pre-production. Production. Pre -production. production. So post -production. Pre-production, production, post-production. Post so what's a pre-production? Preparing. Well, post Getting ready for something. Okay, so what, what the patient goes in pre-production? Set up. Like Set up. Yeah. Most important thing in pre-production. Oh man, I forget this one. Uh, it's all gone. It's simple. All gone. Production is not. He's post-production. No, he's a pre-production too. But what's the most important thing in a pre-production to make a movie or a Script. TV? Script. Script. Casting. Oh. Casting. Director. Director. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, so wait. planning, planning is your pre-production. So you have a script, money. Producer is responsible for bringing money to Sorry. give it to people. So the script is divided into different scenes, shots. 
So everything is prepared. They make storyboards what we're going to shoot. So okay. we haven't reached to that advanced level, but next year maybe we will go more advanced. So we'll go with the storyboard. So well, when we go to location, we know which scenes we're going to do. We'll, we'll do much faster. Did we storyboard the first year? Yeah, the first yeah, year. Yeah, we did it, but uh, I just wanted to give you uh, just yeah, a feel how storyboarding one happens. One because yeah. Oh, that one? We did another one too. I just remember that one. So when you are on a location, you only have a limited time. So you need to go well prepared. A lot of movies even rehearsed. The dialogues are memorized. Like we struggle, but we are learning. So this is our third year. You're going to keep improving it. That's why... Isn't there a fourth? There will be a fourth year. It's going to be a fourth. Because this, this, this one's been going for like... So a lot of people think uh, kids can learn filmmaking in a three-month workshop. You can't learn filmmaking all your life. You keep because it's an art. Art is not a formula. It's not a science. You, you can learn the basics, but you can't actually learn. No, you can learn the basics, but now next year you will start enjoying more because now you know about video editing. You can know how to capture uh, performances, what scenes to shoot. So it will keep making you better, and, and you're gonna start enjoying it more. If you think it's a little boring, production is boring. We'll start enjoying it because now you can tie everything up. So right now I operate camera, there's a reason for that because you can't take camera and put it anywhere. So I, I was thinking about a bad analogy, I think uh, because there's some analogy. people... Yeah, analogy. It's okay. Analogy is okay. I don't know what you're saying. Desi parents have... Uh, I was just making sure you're right. what you were saying. So, 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 um, so there, are, there are a few people in Nishkan TV who think the kids should be doing anything. We There should be no advisor, nobody should be advising. They should meet in a team. So, cut that. Yeah, we have to yeah. cut oh, that out. Oh, so when we, we edit ourselves, we can. Yeah, we, we so, the point is, so, for that, so for that, I was thinking about an analogy. <laughs> analogy. Wait, there's so, if you, oh, give, right if you give somebody who doesn't know how to operate a gun, what will that person do? Kill themselves. The, it could kill himself or it could kill somebody around him. So, yeah. camera is like that gun. This is a horrible analogy. It is. That's what I told you before that. This is a hard one. It's an analogy. <laughs> but, uh, no, but, but it is true for it. So oh. you need to learn it. The reason it goes low. Because camera can be put anywhere. We live in a three dimensional space. There's a height, there's a depth, and XYZ uh, coordinate. So keeping a camera, even I don't know. If, if I say, oh, I know where to keep a camera, I'm wrong. I think I, I want to learn till I die. Just come T B. That's my accent. So you need to learn camera and the camera can't be shaky now. For a turbine time uh, they took our camera, but you could see it's a little shaky. So any shaky camera, the audience won't be able to concentrate what they're talking, they're gonna say the camera is shaky. So that's why. But but some directors use that tool. To shake camera because they want to make you feel uncomfortable. That makes you feel uncomfortable too. But TV, we don't want to make people uncomfortable. We want them to listen to the conversation. Okay. So pre-production is script writing, all the planning which is happening. And for Nishkan TV, we are working on a template. It will have all the steps of pre-production. So we are trying to do as a professional TV companies do it. So you will be learning exactly whatever is done in the industry. Just give me a minute. So in the pre-production, all steps, who's responsible for what, how many days we're going to take, all that good stuff. So production is also called principal <laughs> photography. This is about pre-production. Huh? This is about pre. Okay, go, go. Okay. Um, can you talk about how pre-production is important for editing? So pre-production is important for editing because uh, think about you're making a Spider-Man movie. Okay, so the Spider-Man movie, you're going, to, you're going to shoot everything on green screen. Yeah. So video yes. editor knows what kind of special effects they're going to no, do, what kind of camera angles they're going to do. They kind of so they're planning everything. Most so of shot in London though, the actual streets of London. Yeah. So there's a person called VFX supervisor. Mm -hmm. So that person works with the video mm -hmm. editor to design all those scenes. Mm -hmm. Guys, just consider it. You're going to have a chance to talk later. So it's very important for video editor. And a video editor can say, because script is sent to uh, to your cinematographer, to your video editor, they all read and they interpret how they want to do it. So editor can say to the cinematographer, I would like, love to have the white shot from a hill where two people are standing there. They're just to... So when you show an actor uh, like standing too far, 
What does that mean? It's far away. Far away. So what's a uh, human behavior word for that? Far what's far. a psychology of far? Lonely. Lonely. Luminous. Isolated. Isolated. Luminous. So this is how you show. Like for a movie, uh, Sahar's movie, which is uh, the, road. Uh, the Road Less Traveled. Yeah. So there was a fur in that movie, uh, Ajay Banga. He, he is bullied. So we can show him disconnected from the world by having a wide shots of that person. Mm -hmm. So when you want to go on into into person's mind, what will you do? You go inside like a brain. You can't go inside the <laughs> you brain. You go inside huh? the brain. What do you do? So to show a person close up. close up. So the extreme close up of a person is when you want to read his emotions. That's watch TV, watch any movies. That's what they do all the time. Wide shots. They will establish a, a geography of a scene so the audience can orient their mind where all actors are and then close-ups and wide shots depending upon the mood of that scene. Can I add to this? What? No. This is for the camera. Hmm? Oh, this is for the camera. Also, for pre-production, it is important that you use your slate for, pre for editing so you know when to start so you don't have to watch through the whole video clip. Is that during um, production? You also need to make sure that you have the um, equipment that you need based off of where you're going to be. For example, like the dead cat, if you're going to be outside and you know it's windy. So, you yeah, so those are important things. Slate is very important, and we will talk uh, on our next slide. Why slate is important, or I will show you uh, how do you use that slate for syncing audio and video. Okay, post production. So, video editing is post production. This is where we bring all our raw material, what we shot, it's a raw footage. So we will organize our raw footage by scenes, by takes. Uh, we will take notes, good scene, bad scene. That's why we do slate. Somebody is writing notes. Uh, that person is called? Note taker. Uh, it's, a, it's a called a script continuity person. So the, the continuity person is responsible if there's a dinner scene and if you're drinking yeah. water, make sure the water stays at the same level because there's so many takes. That's if you end up... You can watch movies where the water level keeps going up and down because the, nobody was really noticing it. Like in our movie, The Three Golden Rules, we... Well, in our movie... Well, in our, in our movie, Chal Seva Don't tell the people that. We did one scene last year and now we did uh, another scene of the same. part of the same day yeah, scene. And now the kids' clothes like, doesn't fit and like other men's grown up. Wait, really? So we you shot the last movie. summer and we shot this summer again. So post person editing, okay, different styles of video editing. Video, if you learn video editing, you, you can't say I learned video editing. Every movie, what's the genre? Type of Type movie. movie. Give me an example. Comedy, action, adventure, mystery. Okay, so, so every genre needs a different style of video editing. I was giving an example of a horror Documentary. movie. Documentary. <laughs> Documentary too. Good job. Oh. You can be quiet now. TV show. Let's focus. Otherwise, we won't be able to uh, finish this. So, comedy has a different editing because in a comedy, it's all about the punchline. Somebody is cracking a joke, so you need to capture that punchline. In a drama, you want to keep camera on person's face. You want to show his emotions. On a music video, if you watch an MTV music video, those are cut very fast. So don't, each scene is like maybe one second, two seconds. They keep moving. Different okay. angles, different colors, so that's a different style. So MTV okay. popularized that uh, style of a video editing. So different movies need a different style okay. of, a, of a video editing. And because you guys do a movies from a different genres, so you need to master that art of that. How are you going to do it? Are you going to stay? So if you want to keep a camera on, a, on your actor for 10 seconds, but when you're shooting it, you only have 5 seconds, how are you going to do it? So you need to make sure you have enough uh, you're rolling camera for enough time to capture those emotions. Mm -hmm. That's why we do like one person is saying dialogues and I use I say that okay let's capture uh, reaction shots. So that's why we capture reaction shots so we can keep okay. camera on that person if it's needed and okay? Mm -hmm. Okay now let's talk about so we measure time so what's the measurement of time? Seconds. Yeah. But, but the three things to that for, for no hours, minutes, hours, minutes, and seconds. So that's a measurement of time for video editing. The measurement is called time code. 
And so what's the fourth parameter which is added to uh, the measurement of time? Hour, minute, second, and? No, second. No. second. Frame. 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 So, so, and this is very important, so if you move, move camera. <laughs> so every video, and this is the most important thing. Hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. So every uh, when you go to video editor, you will see that you will see one zero 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 twenty four, and depending upon what the frame rate for for uh, for that shoot is or for that project is. So what are frames? I explained you guys when we were talking about uh, a set of pictures shot together. What what's a frame? Frame is one singular picture. And yeah. So how many pictures were clicked in a second? Yeah. yeah. So if there is a person standing like this, and then okay, so and then this person's hand goes like this. And then you make it like go straight. So if there are like 24 pictures, if you play it in a sequence, that will be motion. That person is doing like this thing. This is what video camera is doing. It. When you click a still picture, there's only one picture. So this is a still picture. In a video, you have number of pictures depending upon. Guys, you, you can't do this thing. This is a very serious matter now. If you are learning editing, if you don't understand frame rates, then you want to learn editing. Editing is not by cutting stuff here and there. So what's a frame? It's like a picture. Yeah. Every second. Picture every second. Like how many? Right. Frames. So most of the films are shot on how many frames? Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Twenty-four frames. So we always so. And the symbol for frame rate is. F. Yeah. It's also called FIPS. Twenty-four FIPS. FIPS. It's frames per second. So frames are always measured in seconds. So movie can have a one hour, 30 minutes, 12 a second, and maybe 10 frames. Any video you watch on YouTube will have this measurement. So watch it very closely. Most of the films are done on 24. Wait, YouTube fits. doesn't have frames on it. Yeah. It's not? No. Okay, it's not that. It just goes a second. So. Okay, so, but when you do video edit, That's you separate. have full frame. So, okay, so this is your film frame rate. And there's a history why it's 24, so we don't want to go into details. And then the TV in America is 30 FIPS. It's also called NTSC. In Europe, 25, 25 FIPS, which is called PAL. 35. Just, then there's a SECOM, but so 30 frames and 25 frames, Europe versus America. Wait, what? So 24 frames, huh? Why, why do they even have it different? Does it like, well, It's a standard, yeah. so they define the time. So, so European, European people are too lazy to get their cameras. Uh, India is also foul, so. Oh, it's just so, like so, alive, and it said that there's no audio. So, it goes up this side. So don't. Show this again. <laughs> okay, so, so you got time code? Hours, mm -hmm. minute, 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 second, second frame. frame. We shoot all our films in 24 frames to get that film look. And you can use your Nishcom TV program in 24 frames, but we'll do 30. you can go 30 too, because it's more video. And, uh, but we go, are we going to use 30 though? Or yeah, 30? 24. Our camera is set for 24, so you can go 24 frames too. So this, this is the thing about a frame rate. Mm -hmm. Repeat in your project for the first time, it will ask you how many... Uh, first thing is when you import your footage, your project will read that frame rate and it will create a project with that frame rate. But you can uh, you can change it if you want, but let's not confuse that. Okay, so now if 24 frames give you normal motion, so like I'm talking right now, it's a normal motion. If you want to slow me down, like I'm talking very slowly, my hand. So what do you need to do? Go higher in frames. Yeah, more so frames. Higher. So one second now will uh, will play more frames. It will slow down. Mm -hmm. So when we do slow mo, slow motion, slow mo, slow motion, we typically shoot with mm -hmm. one twenty clips. And if you want to fast forward, then like you go 16. ten frames. So it depends upon how fast you want to do it. Well, 
So this is how the slow motion, how the camera is doing it. When you tell camera to shoot 120 frames, it's capturing 120 pictures in a second. Mm -hmm. oh, versus so that's why, 24. That's why those YouTube channels with like the really slow, like the slow mo guys, their YouTube channel. That's why they always talk about how their cameras are yeah. like 2,400. Like yeah, those are like really high end okay. cameras. Yeah, Our like the cameras we have can go up to 120 frames. I think. Yeah, the 120 frames. So that's slow motion and less than 24 frames will be. 24 frames is where human eye thinks everything is normal, the way real life is happening. This 120 is, is not. <laughs> cool, so this is very important, time code and frames. Because so that's, you will be looking into your videos because even a one frame in your uh, video can cause a problem. It can look abrupt, it can look like a black thing can come for a one second. Your eye will be trained for that. Hey, I'm deep. So, I, so I've been doing editing now for a long time. Even if one frame is wrong, I can tell that. I can say something is wrong, but then you have to go and look in detail. So, we need to be talking about... No, you can sit there. What? We're just talking about uh, these important concepts for video editing. Do you know what a time code is? Uh, so, I measurement of time... Yeah, measurement of time is hours, minutes, seconds. So when we come to video editing, it's hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. And frame is nothing, but it's uh, it's a sequence of pictures played in one second. So see what we do. So films are shot on 24 frames per second. So what camera is doing? It's capturing 24 pictures in a second. So that's human eye perceive 24 frames per second as a motion. So if you have to slow mo, like a slow motion, what will you do? Increase the frames. Percent. Increase the frame. So when we do slow motion, we shoot at 120 frames. So our camera allows to capture 120 pictures per second. So so one second will play more pictures, so it will slow down. And similarly if you wanted to have a fast forward effect that things are moving fast like if you watch the old Charlie Chaplin or whatever. So they used to use a 16 frames per second at that time. So you could see the old black and white movies used to move a little faster because the frame rate was 16. Because everything came to experiment. There was no science which says 24 frames is a good one. They tried with 16 frames, they tried with 30, 50, and they then stick to 24 frames because 24 frames give you that cinema magic look, which is very different from a video look on your TV. So you can compare, watch your TV video versus film in a theater. So this is different. So that's why. 24 frames is standard film. And in America, TV is done 30 frames, which is called NTSC. In Europe, it's 24 frames per second. It's called PAL. So the most important thing for you guys to take uh, from this lesson, lesson is time code and frames. Because we'll be talking about time code and frames all the time. Okay, compression. Anybody want to guess what is the compression? I mean, like Compressor? bring the, like the two frames together. Yeah. Yep, that's what a compression is. And I think uh, the success of YouTube is because of compression. Success of MP3 is because of compression. So there's an audio compression and there's a video compression. So before MP3, because MP3 popularized this all audio digital revolution, because the file sizes are in K kilobytes. Before that, it used to be pretty heavy size, which can't be transferred, you can download it, it can't be streamed, but MP3 changed that. Now on the video side, a uh, lot of progression has happened. If you're more interested, we can do a little scientific, uh, like a science chapter on compression, but uh, when there were DVDs, the compression was called MPEG-2. So MPEG is an acronym for Motion Pictures Engineers Group. So this group is responsible for creating those compressions. This is the world standard organization. So MPEG-2, now you will see these for uh, words MPEG-4. Have you seen something called MP4? Yeah. 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 So, so these are all compressions. JPEG. JPEG is a picture compression. So JPEG is for picture. So, so now the problem with the video is because we have 24 frames or 30 frames or 25 frames depending on where you are in the region of the world. So the compression has to be different from a single picture. 
So when we take a, a still picture, we take this picture, and uh, some people shoot raw. Raw means everything which is captured by a camera, the raw data. So you can manipulate your white balance, you can manipulate your aperture, all those things we will talk. Aperture. So the JPEG is a very compressed format. So JPEG is a compression. But when it comes to video, so if you have 24 frames, so one, two, three, Eight, and nine. go. So what kind of compression you can do here? You, you can just like, you so, can make them less like, like so less you, enhanced. So, so you can do compression within a frame. Yeah. So that's, that's the one way of doing it, compression within a frame. We are talking, two people are talking and we have 24 frames to capture that in a second. So that, there is another way of compressing it by capturing only the motion pixels of that. Because in digital, these are all pixels. You know this thing? So, or maybe we want to go, go into details. So you know what a pixel is kids? You know yeah. what a pixel is? So pixel defines a resolution. So when we talk about high definition, what's the pixel ratio for high definition? 720p. No, 720p is high definition, but say, Real what's the full HD? Full HD is 1080p. 1920 by 1080. 1080. Then quad, so, quad HD is 1440 yeah. by... So these are pixels. So these are 1920 pixels. Uh, it's a uh, uh, vertical or horizontal? Yeah, so this 1080p is your vertical, this is horizontal. Have you seen this term? 16 by 9? That's yeah. an aspect ratio. Yeah. That's an aspect ratio of this. If you divide this by this, That's it comes, so what it means, for every 16 pixel this side, there are 9, nine pixels here. So this is a TV resolution, but for motion pictures, 21 by 9, right? It's 2.3521. Two one. For every 1 inch, it's, it's 2.35 inch. Uh, horizontally, it's, there's 2.35 to 1. That's a TV ratio. So when we talk about this, you can see that it's a TV ratio. So this is the TV ratio. When you watch movies on TV, do you see those black bars on the top? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's because yeah. those movies were done with this ratio, but we are trying to retrofit into 16 by 9. So those black bars are compensating for this difference in their <coughs> resolutions. So this is very important when you shoot film. This, this applies to editing uh, too, because now with our cameras we shoot with 235 to 1. So we keep our frame with this ratio, and we because now we show in the YouTube or TV, so we put black bars, so it gives you a little cinematic look to that. But if you have a special lenses called anamorphic lenses, with anamorphic you can show actual, uh, like a little stretched video which gives you a cinema feed. Any questions? I, I think I'm going a little fast too. Any questions you guys have? Alicia is tired. Okay, so look, understanding time code frames is very important. And congratulations, I'm just giving you a very quick uh, overview. Uh, compression, the quality of your uh, video also depends on the compression. Uh, so these are the compressions, and these compressions are stored in, in, a, in a wrapper. So wrappers are like MOV, MOV is a wrapper, MOV is not a compression guys, when you see MOV, it's a wrapper, so, so it and Mobi can have an MP4, MP4, it can have any compression video inside that. It will have, so wrapper is basically it's keeping audio and video information together, because this is only video uh, information. MP3 is a very popular, on Apple it's AAC, have you seen AAC? Mm -hmm. It's an Apple's proprietary compression, which is more popular these days. So this wrapper has this information, okay, which, what video compression? MP4. What audio AAC? So the rapper's responsibility is to wrap audio, video, and other information. Duration of your video, duration of your film, all that metadata goes into that. MOV is very popular. Then there's an AVI, even 
Uh, MP4 is a compression, but it's a wrapper also. Mm. And yeah, so these things are very important when you're video editing because when you have to create your final project for delivery, you need to do that. The real films which you see in cinema, it is done in a format called DPX. It's a digital picture, <laughs> something. And then there are other formats, B and D. Just like still pictures, you can shoot video also raw. So that raw images are done in DNG files. It's called a digital negative. Make sense? Mm -hmm. But the most important thing, time code and frames. As long as you understand that, it will be good to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we talked about video formats, we talked about uh, wrappers. So since you're talking very specifically about Final Cut Pro, so when we go uh, in front of computer, so there are three concepts of Final Cut Pro. I will raise this. Are they, mm. uh, they like a paper piece towel or something? Okay, I'll use this place. Okay, so I think I have a space here. So there are three yeah. concepts which are very important in Final Cut Pro. Every software has their own way to organize your footage or data. So Final Cut Pro has this Categorization. So you, when you start, a, uh, when you start a new project, so you wanted to call it. Uh, <laughs> so the first thing you do in Final Cut Pro, you create a library. So library is your main, which will contain all different folders, structure, and everything. Each folder is called an event because Final Cut Pro is for video editing. You want it to capture events. Events can be birthday, wedding, shoot one, shoot two. So they call it events, which you can name. And the third concept is project. So this is very important. So library, event, and a project. Okay, now, so what? So you can ask, what's the difference between a library and a project? Event is pretty straightforward. It's a folder yeah. where you put your all uh, all your raw footage. So library is a self-sufficient file on a on a Apple computer, which you can double-click it opens everything. So it contains again, just like a wrapper. Yeah. Think of this as a wrapper. Library is a wrapper which contains all your projects, all your event files in a one self-sufficient package. So you don't have to take 10 files if you wanted to move to a new Mac. Just take that project file and you're good to go. So you can use it on any folder. That way, do you have more important to talk than yeah. what I'm discussing? So then you can maybe take it later. Yeah. Okay, these, these concepts are most important. Time code, frame, library, event project. So when you, library is just a name. When you create a project, you need to define your project as 1080p, is it 4K, 5K, 720p, those are different options, then it will ask you what audio or for, uh, compression you want to use, so 48 kilohertz is a pretty common one, 96 kilohertz, so you can decide which audio you want to do it. What's the best audio? Uh, 48 kilohertz is pretty good for human eye, so. Human eye. Yeah, sorry. What is 96 human? Is it? It's it's a compression. It's a wow. constant. It's well, sampling and. Would it sound like? Higher? So it sounds like maybe. very quickly. So this is an audio wave. At 48 kilohertz, the digitization process is sampling 48,000 data points compression. In 96, it's 96,000. So 96 kilohertz will sound better. Hey, what about those videos on YouTube, of, like songs, like but like with like yeah. like surround audio, or, like moves around. Like, yeah, surround. so that, that's a different format. So typically audio is stereo, which is two channel, left and right. Mine surround is Most of our Nishkam TV work will be two channel, but then you can have five dot one, which is surround, surround and center, surround. left, right, sound the back, yeah. and then the subwoofer, which is yeah. that one. Yeah, we don't have to go to those details. We're not <laughs> going to shoot five or one. Sorry. Okay, now let's talk about a project. So this is important. In Final Cut Pro, when you create a project, an empty 
timeline is created. Okay? Okay. And at the top, you will see this thing. Okay. The time board will start here. As you start putting your clips, yeah. the clip, uh, the num this number. number will move depending on your frame rate. Mm -hmm. So zero as to 23, and then it will go back to, mm -hmm. this will go to one, uh, zero, one, zero, zero. Mm -hmm. So this is how you look at where you actually are in your video editing. And you need to keep track of every second when you're doing a very like a minute uh, editing of a specific scenes, it's very important. So it's called a frame accurate editing because you can go frame. So you can zoom your timeline and then you can see frame by frame. You can see those 24 pictures actually. Oh yeah, I see. So you could see that. We'll talk about zooming and so this is a timeline. Every timeline will have this line there. Anybody wants to tell me what that line is called? Playhead. Good. Yeah, it's called a playhead. <laughs> so playhead is what's moving and then the time oh, code keeps, darn, good guess. And the time codes keep changing with that. So that's a playhead. So in old video editing softwares, there's a concept of source. And monitor. So source is a clip you would like to edit. So that clip comes in a source monitor, mm -hmm. and monitor is what you're editing on your timeline. So mm -hmm. you can go. So you can play. Press a play button. It will play your sequence. Mm -hmm. So timeline sequence words are used interchangeably. So you can so sequence timeline. Uh, timeline is most commonly used in Final Cut Pro as well as in Da Vinci. The source is only playing that specific clip because you may have a 10 different takes. So you can play one the first take and say, oh, this looks good. So you can drag it to other clips which are already on this timeline. So it will play one after the other. So source monitor. Apple doesn't have the concept of source monitor and there was a little backlash when they uh, launched uh, Final Cut Pro 10. So what they do, so when you are looking into your specific clips, your individual clips, so the same monitor is used for both, both for timeline as well as for source. Mm -hmm. It can be a little confusing, it's still confusing for me. So you can go into your specific clip, it will start playing that specific clip. If you click on here, then uh, your monitor takes over, or your, that window takes over, and it uh, starts playing that. Oh, so like on other editors, not Apple, there's two different screens? Yeah, yeah. on DaVinci, there are two screens. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. I prefer that. I've heard that's yeah, I have a lot of editing software. I have those two screens. Yeah. Most of most of the software, except Apple. I didn't know that because I've always been editing on Apple. So you learn something screen. new. Yeah. Good. Okay, so these concepts are very important: timeline, playhead, frame rates. I think you are pretty good about that. Okay, so we have talked Apple's about <laughs> timeline. So now, rendering. Now the timeline, it can. If you already know, so you can leave this room. So now timeline, so there's a so if you think there's a parent child relationship between a timeline and what? You want to tell me what's inside timeline? Uh, so like so so the real hierarchy of the parent child relationship is we have a project which comprises of a time uh, of a timeline and the timeline has what? Source. Yeah, source, but what? Media. Like the yeah, video. it's media, but there's a specific name I'm looking for. Video. Video, yeah. Tracks. It is. So it, it contains tracks. <laughs> so video, but you miss audio. So there are tracks, and track can be of type V or A. So yeah. this is a relationship. Project is a timeline, timeline has different tracks oh, okay. and again Apple doesn't have that concept but it's good to understand so V1 means first track okay guys this is very important if you don't understand you will miss a lot of how special effects are done what's a green screen you will miss all that this is the most important thing so this is a video track and by default you will have A1 and A2 because audio comes in the stereo if you record it only mono track, mono track is only one track, you can always copy it to one. We use mostly mono tracks because we only have one microphone. So you can drop it here so the audio will be really consistent from both sides of the speakers. And you can watch a lot of YouTube videos, the audio is coming from one speaker, 
because they forget to add it to the audio two track. Mm -hmm. we, we do that mistake so many times. So this is clear now. Timeline or uh, video tracks and audio tracks. Now let's go to the fun, more fun stuff. That wasn't fun. It's not fun. That was fun. I mean, that was if you understand these fundamentals, you, you can get anything actually. So these fundamentals are very important. Yay. Now, okay, so let's see. We have this. This is the most important thing. You have a V1 track, which has yeah. something, some action happening. Mm -hmm. I drop an, another video track on, on top of that. What will happen? It'll in take the, the, the top yeah, video track will start videos. playing. Okay. Why? Yeah. Because it's higher. Well, higher the most track. recent? It is. So, so again, I want you to understand fundamentals. Yeah, you guys are right. It will take over. So, what's happening is, again, let's assume this is a one second. And we have 24 frames. And then you drop another one second with 24 frames. So these are all pixels. Let's assume this is a 1920 by 1080. And this is exactly 1920 by 1080. So when this picture is placed on top of this picture, these pixels cover pixels which are beneath uh, that track. This is a very important concept, otherwise you will miss a lot of stuff. Never. Yes. So Wait, those if it's pixels, under that, it hmm? won't do that if it's under, it won't take over. What, under where? If you put a new clip under the one, yeah, under V1, take over. Yeah. then the V, whichever is the top pixels oh. will take precedence. Okay. So think, in, a, in, in your mind, think about pixels, because this is going to relate to everything, the GPU, graphics processing, everything is coming there. So we have these 1920-bit cluster of these pixels, and these cluster of pixels, when we put these clusters, they will take uh, they will cover those pixels, for example, so you won't see that, okay? Now, have you played with the different settings in a video, the opacity, transparency, what does that mean? That means like the bottom clip, if it's transparent, then exactly. it's unstable. So this is all pixels, all pixels playing now. So what you're saying is, these pixels are, are absolute, so what, one pixel is actually Comprises of three colors, red, red, green, blue. Red, green, blue. It's called RGB, so you will see that. So that is making sense for you guys? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So every pixel is three colors. These are called primary colors, and combination of these colors give you different colors. And uh, that's what's happening here. The top pixels are covering this thing, but if you decrease a transparency of red, green, and blue color, we'll start saying pixels beneath that clip. Mm. That's what happens with opacity and transparency. Now, now let's talk about green screen. We do all green screen. So we have, uh, this is a picture of a person. This is all green screen. And then we have, uh, let's say, there's a river or an ocean. So we tell you software, his software, can you remove <laughs> This green, keep this person here and remove all those pixels. Don't make it transparent opacity, just remove it totally. What will happen? The, the bottom, bottom will start showing. So, this is like a hole now. So, this person is, is uh, opaque, everything else is transparent. That's why we start seeing the bottom there. This is the most important thing. So, the software, have you heard this word called rendering? Yeah. yeah. This is what a rendering is all about. It's all mixing of pixel is the process called rendering. So this is what the software is doing. And these days the software is especially written to render on a processor called GPU, which is a graphics processing unit instead of a CPU. CPU is a uh, calculation intensive task like mathematics or whatever. But the, the, the specialized GPU, like NVIDIA is very popular, AMD makes its GPUs too. Their job is to take those pixels and mix it according to the instructions the software is given. Pretty simple. If you get this concept of pixels, you can be so creative because now you can play with so many things. On Final Cut Pro, you will see, do you want to add pixels? Do you want to subtract pixels? There are like 10, 20 different options you can play with it if you understand what's happening underneath. It's very important to understand what's happening under the hood 
because then you can be more creative. So that's the basic concept of green screen. This is this is the basic concept of every computer graphics. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So the whole computer graphics industry is based upon this rendering concept and pixel mixing. That's pretty simple. You can create the cloning effect. We use cloning. What we're doing? We're taking pixels of this person and we paste this. It's a cloning, so the same person is cloned. Because it's all pixels, so you can manipulate pixels separately. You can clone two, ten, whatever you want to do it. And there's another thing, just, just keep this in your toolbox. Like some of the scenes in films are not done on a green screen. Because some yeah. few scenes are not possible to do in green screen. So that process is called roto scoping. This is a very specialized industry. These people make a lot of money because so what they're doing now, they're gonna go to each picture. If they're 24 pictures, 60 pictures per second. Mm -hmm. They will go and remove pixels for every frame. It's a very laborious work. For every picture, they remove it, and once you remove it, then you can paste anywhere. That's millions of pixels. Yes, mil well, it's millions of pictures. Once That's what they're getting. The software helps you to do it. You don't have to go pixel by pixel. You just need to go and do. There are roto tools, which will I'll show you in Final Cut Pro. You can go roto tools, do it, and delete it. And what about CGI? That's what a CGI is. Oh, We're talking is. about CGI. Oh, okay. This whole industry is called computer graphics interface CGI industry. And it's a specialized in computer science. There's a whole field on this thing. So it's a CGI. It's so this so pixel basically. mixing, it's so simple for me to say it's pixel so mixing. It's part of CGI, not oh, okay. CGI. This pixel mixing is a whole. Computer science has a whole field how to do that. Yeah. Okay. There are, like, we talk about uh, vector graphics, what's the bit, uh, bit maps, all that. Make sense? <laughs> this is fun, I think. Once you understand the fundamentals of pixel mixing, and similarly, third layer comes in, fourth layer comes in. So, uh, okay, so now you must have heard about. So, if you see Nishkan TV uh, logo, mm -hmm. it's transparent. You could see the background because it's made specially. What's that called? PNG. Yeah, PNG yeah. is a is a portable. Yeah. Why why it has this thing? It's a transparent background. Okay, so every Second pixel has it. RGB. So JPEG has information about RGB. PNG files has another pixel which talks about transparency. <laughs> transparency is also called opacity. Zero. It's called alpha channel. <laughs> you, one, once you start reading it, these words are going to come to you. So PNGs are the only files because it has a transparency information. So it's a transparent. Whatever is behind that, it, it will show up. Like last week we did Nishkam TV live. It was not a PNG file, it was yeah. a JPEG file. So it covers whole back, background. So it's always good to have logos in a PNG because it contains an alpha channel, so it tells rendering software, okay? Hey, rendering software, this is a PNG file, and uh, the transparency information says, for this pixel, just remove those pixels. So that's what it is. It's, it's just a data PNG file. If you try to open PNG file in a text editor, you will see that it's weird codes inside that. It's just telling a renderer what to do with that particular file format. It can be a so if you understand this thing, I think you will understand most of the CGI and you're going to have a lot of fun at the very other thing. Okay, so we talked about rendering, we talked about CPU and GPU. Okay, let's quickly go to so this. PNG yeah. a picture file or a movie file? It's a picture, picture file. file. Yeah. Uh, picture file and uh, yeah, on videos yeah, you can't have a PNG because that's why we do green screen and then we remove green screen to make it PNG look like. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about these things. I think we quickly talked about library project events, importing media, tagging, folder structure, audio, video sync. Uh, we'll talk about mark in, mark out, and other stuff you do. And then we'll go through. So once you're, you're done with your video, add it. Then it's you called like a rough cut. 
because your first rough cut won't have a music, it won't have titles, for TV especially you could have emotion graphics, your opening sequence comes in and then a person comes, or your host comes and we put in a name, the name which is coming at the bottom is called lower thirds, so everything is defined, a word, so we we'll talk about lower thirds. So color correction, so I want to talk about color correction, it's, it's the most important concept also after this thing. So if you understand RGB, we are going to start from there. So what does chroma mean? We, we always say chroma, what does chroma mean? I think it's a Greek word or something. Chroma. <laughs> so chroma means color. Chroma has a color information. Google oh, yeah. Chrome. And uh, what is luminance? Light. Luminance. Luminance has a light information. You're selling that. And these are again, these are fundamental concepts. If you can get this, everything else will be a piece of cake. Any picture you take still, this applies to both still pictures as well as your videos. So luminance has three things which is uh, <laughs> because both softwares use a different terminology for that. Okay. Highlights, shadows, and then you have gamma. 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 So it's gamma. And I'll show you. So this is very important for color correction. So when you shoot using any camera, you still have a room to improve that. A lot of people don't do it. That's why the pictures don't look good. When you shoot raw, then when, when we say raw, there are two things. Raw is like a pure data. And then there's another format called log format. So camera is trying to capture first before we go there. So highlights are the brightest parts of your scene. Shadows are your darkest parts. And the camera is in everything in the middle. Okay? And in software and video editing, when you're doing color correction, it will be represented as a waveform. And you will see something from 0 to 1024 or, or 1. And it's called IRE. It's all detail we can talk as you get go more advanced. So the first thing is when you uh, will see your footage, you will see everything is like clustered around here. Maybe. So to make that picture look really good, you will go and up your highlights. So your highlight should be around 1024. So that's it. 1024 is the whitest of white. After that, everything is is like a we got overexposed. Have you used this word overexposed and underexposed? Anything about 1024 is overexposed. It, it will be like a white, it will flash. Mm -hmm. So try to bring this to 1024, bring your darkest to zero. After that, again, it will be totally black. So this gives the most beautiful picture. And, and the gamma is in the middle, it's like 512. So every time you adjust that, depending upon how good your camera is, you will have room to play with these things. And you can play with the so this is color. What's the saturation? Are you? Well, you must have seen this word saturation. Yeah. It makes the highlights lighter. So yeah. saturation is uh, how bright is my RGB colors. So that's the saturation. So sat if you increase the saturation, you will make your picture more red actually. And and again, guys, we will have more classes, so you'll get it. Uh, this will take. So, if I increase saturation, you go what's called warm colors. So it's more red. Red colors are called more warm. If you are on the opposite, it's called cool colors. And in filmmaking, a lot of directors. This is a creative choice. You can make it. They will show like a little bluish to show aloofness and cool colors. Warm is supposed to be like most of the Bollywood Hindi movies are very warm, like saturated, 
for the color, clothes, whatever. So it's a choice, you can make it. You can have a green tinge based upon the green color you have. We'll, we'll show you. So that's all color correction if you understand these things. So the waveform, I'll show you waveform, so then it will start making sense to you. Then other things, dissolves, tightening, color. And color grading is, is so this is color correction, which is you're doing the basic things right first. Once this is fixed, then color grading can be, has anybody watched, anybody watched Matrix? No. So Matrix has a very green tinge to it. So that's a color grading. So the director chose it to show it as a green. So a lot of movies have very distinct look. So that's what Matrix they chose green. So that's a color grading. So you can decide what colors you will keep. Uh, yeah. All right, so I think we can jump into Final Cut Pro and uh, let me show you actually what we just discussed.